Hello, this is John Hillebrandt with GlideFast Consulting. And today I wanted to provide you with an introduction to ServiceNow's Flow Designer. Now, what is Flow Designer? Uh, Flow Designer is a now platform feature for automating processes in a single design environment. It lets process owners use natural language to automate approvals, tasks, notifications, and record operations without coding. You can expand Flow Designer to communicate with external instances and third-party systems by requesting a separate subscription to Integration Hub, which is used to automate integration tasks or develop custom integrations. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's a lot like the workflow editor. This is kind of going to be the replacement possibly in the future. They've, they've kind of geared, they've tried to push towards the flow designer instead of using the workflow editor, especially for no code or low code admins that don't know a lot about scripting. It, the flow designer is included with the platform license. Uh, but Integration Hub, if you use that, it will require an additional subscription package. Uh, there are several benefits to using Flow Designer, and here are several that are outlined here. These are all taken from the ServiceNow documentation. Um, so you'll find this all in the documentation, and this is just more of a high level. I'm showing you kind of the um, kind of the high level uh, positives of using uh, the Flow Designer. So it consolidates multiple automation capabilities in a single environment. So process owners and developers can build business processes from a single interface. It consolidates configuration and runtime information in a single environment as well. So they can troubleshoot flows from a single interface. It provides natural language descriptions of flow, flow logic to help non-technical users understand flow elements. So if you, have un, if you don't have technical users that know how to use to script very well, you can build flows with like they call them data pills and data pills are essentially variables. So you can, you can actually drill down into the fields and dot walk and grab the variables that you need and those are actually called data pills. You can drag and drop them into the, into the flow and I will show you that uh, towards the end of this, uh, this deck. Uh, it promotes process automation by enabling subject matter experts to develop and share reasonable actions with flow designers. So you can actually, anything you build and save can be reused, especially if you build subflows and whatnot. They can be reused in other flows. Uh, it reduces upgrade costs with upgrade safe now platform logic, replacing complex custom script. It reduces development costs by providing a library of reusable actions. And it enables extending Flow Designer content by subscribing to ServiceNow Integration Hub or installing spokes. Now the Flow Designer has uh, three main components. Now there's a lot of other components below that, like there's different kinds of actions and things like that. But the three main components uh, that make it up are flows, subflows, and actions. So a flow, think of it like kind of the main, that's like the workflow. If you're used to the workflow editor and building them out, for CAD items or different tables. Think of a flow as kind of the overall workflow. It's an automated process, uh, a process of con consisting of a sequence of actions and a trigger. So a trigger is when should it fire. Flows automate business logic for a particular application or process. Now subflow, a subflow, think of it like a, uh, an additional, like if, you, if you're used to workflows, it's like uh, the sub workflow that runs in conjunction to the main workflow. Um, that, that kind of takes over for a specific process and then it goes back to the parent workflow. So it's an automated process consisting of a sequence of reusable actions and specific data inputs that allow the process to be started from a flow, subflow, or script. Uh, subflows automate generic business logic that can be applied to multiple applications or processes. Now, finally, there's their actions. What, what, what needs to be done when these flows run and when the conditions are met? So now platform features, it, it, it's, you don't have to write code. It's, it's, if someone submits an inquiry via an incident, for instance, you can use an update record action to assign it to a specific group and you can use data pills and uh, do it. You know, it's, it's completely easy to do and you don't, you don't need any complex scripts or anything like that to do the work. So I will show you that here. There is a couple of examples I have towards the end here of this deck and I will show you this in the tool as well. I have these actually set up in my personal developer instance. So we have an instance, so everything is top down as you'll see, but uh, this is one that I created called update incident inquiry. So what's the trigger? The trigger is when an incident is created, okay? So what you do when you first create this is you go, okay, what's the trigger? It's created. So what's created? An incident record. So you choose the table incident. Uh, what's the condition? You don't want them to fire on all of the incidents, right? So 
you choose a specific uh, condition. In this case, I put category is inquiry or help. Uh, and basically what I have the action, I choose an action to update the incident record. There are several actions you can take. Um, as you'll notice, some of those, some of these actions will require additional um, plugins. They won't all show up. There's additional plugins that are available that you can install that will allow additional actions to be available to you. Um, in this case, I've got update record. And what that essentially does is it just, based on the conditions here, it updates the record with the following information. So it's pointed to the instant table, uh, the fields, assignment group is customer, or is customer support, and impact is three, is three or low. So in this case, you know, a lot of companies may go, well, if someone's submitting an incident, an inquiry or help uh, incident, and they say, well, the, uh, the impact is high, uh, we don't really think that's true, we're gonna, we're gonna default it to low. This is just an example, it may never happen, but this is just something you can, a very simple flow that you can utilize to update a couple fields on an incident record. So this will automatically assign to customer support and the impact will change as soon as they submit this incident. Now the next one I have is a little bit more complex. Uh, this is a training request approval. Now, I created a training uh, table, uh, kind of an application in my personal developer instance. And what this essentially is, is anytime a training request is created, it updates the training request. So basically, so we update the record, uh, to state awaiting approval, okay? So that's right here, this little area here. Assignment group customer support, it asks for approval, uh, and then it, uh, if the request is approved, it updates the training request record, else it updates it again with like, it goes to close complete. And I won't get too into it here because I'm going to show you this in the tool. Uh, and finally, uh, provided here are some resources. Now, all of the, the benefits that I've provided, the, um, what, you know, the definition of it, this is all in the ServiceNow documentation, which you'll find here. Uh, it's pretty detailed. There's also, I've provided the, the Flow Designer release notes. This came out in the Kingston release. So you, I've provided the release notes to, so you can look back on this and uh, kind of get an idea of how, how it, you know, when it came out, the history of, of flow designer, et cetera. And this, I believe, is to the main page. Um, and there are some good, good, uh, there's some good information on that page as well. Uh, here are some training resources. This takes you to developer service, developer.servicenow.com. It's pretty extensive. Uh, the flow designer training takes you through a lot. Uh, and there, this one is regarding decisions, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's, that kind of goes deep into the different things you can do with flow designer. Uh, and this one here is another developer one that I'm thinking, I'm trying to think what this one is exactly. Um, developing for flow designer objectives. Okay, this is an additional one for uh, on top of the regular flow designer. Uh, so there's several different, there's several different training pieces you can use, uh, different training. Uh, so finally, let me go into my personal instance and show you what I have here. So if you click, uh, if you just type in flow here, you'll see several different options. And what you want to do here in the case that, you know, for creating flows and whatnot, you click on the designer link. And what I'll do is it'll open another window kind of similar to um, like Studio would if you're working on applications. And you're presented with several different flows here. You can actually click up here between flows, subflows, actions, etc. Now I want to I want to use flows because I'm looking for a specific one. So we have update incident inquiry here. And as you can see, uh, this is the flow. This gr this little green button here means that is activated. So you see this button over here called deactivate. That's a good indication that it is activated. This is the other indication here. This would be gray if it was not activated. So it's, it's kind of like a workflow where you can publish it and you can check it out, uh, but you, you can tell at a glance if it's actually activated. Um, so what, what are we doing here? We're saying the trigger, if an incident record is created and category is inquiry or help. So what, what we do here is we update the record if that meets the condition. And what I did here is I actually just, I chose the action, see, this all, see all these separate, these individual actions. ServiceNow Core, you'll find a lot of the main actions that you typically use. 
I, I mean, I found myself using this most of the time. So it's to update records, create record, create tasks, delete records, et cetera, et cetera. You have quite a few and you have all of these other ones. And these, like I said, these will not all show up for you unless you've installed the appropriate plugins. Okay. So ServiceNow Core and we chose update record, which is right here. You just click on that. And then uh, what do we do? The incident record, that's usually pre-populated because we've chosen it up here. We use assignment group as customer support and impact is low. But you can actually see these triggers over here and, the, and this is the incident record itself. What, you, what you'll notice is you can actually drill down into here. So you can drag these pills to where you want them. And I'll show you that in a second. But in this case, let's check this out. Create new. All right. Test inquiry. And let's change the impact to high. And let's submit it. We'll just save it here so we can see what happens to the fields. And you get a, give it a second, and then what will happen is the, the flow will run. You see it ran, and it changed the impact to low. So the priority changed to planning, since this is an inquiry or help uh, request or incident. And it assigned it right to customer support. So this is just something very simple that you can do. Uh, typically, people would have done use the workflow editor, right? They'd create a workflow. They'd point, you know, they'd use the incident table. And, you know, most people think, well, workflow is traditionally used in, in catalog. <laughs> but it's obviously used for uh, change, et cetera. But this, using this, the flow designer to handle small, to handle small operations like this or just, uh, just changing the impact in the assignment group, it's best to use the flow designer at this point because it's much easier to use. It took me literally a couple minutes to, to create this. Uh, the second one I wanted to show you is called training request approval. This is a little bit more involved. Uh, so what this is, is we, we do the same type of thing here for the trigger. If a training request is created, what are, we going to, what are we going to do? We're going to update the training request record. So we're going to change the state to awaiting approval, and we're going to assign the ticket to customer support. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask for approval. So basically we've got this, you see this here, we basically dragged this over to this. So we, we grabbed the training request record, and we dragged it over here onto this record. It's, kind of, it's called a data pill. And as I mentioned earlier, you can dot walk to these other, um, you can dot walk, think of them like variables. You can dot walk to these other variables and dot walk to like the assigned to manager, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll, we'll, I'll show you that in a second here. So we have the training request record, uh, approval field is approval, and these get pre-populated because this is extended from task and it already has those fields on there. So the approval field and the journal field were automatically populated when I chose the ask for approval. Uh, approve when, so you can select approve, anyone approves, and then what you can do, what I did here is I went, I drilled down in here, I've already got the training request record expanded. Uh, so we, we can go down to, oh, where is it, requested for, expand that, uh, and then we grab the manager, and that's, you just drag that over here. So basically, it, it what it'll do is it'll create a an approval for the user's manager automatically or reject anyone rejects. So you do the same thing here. You, you grab the manager and you throw the data pill right there. And then what I did is I built an if, uh, an if sta an if else statement. So you can do, it's similar to workflow instead of having to code it out or build, uh, grab if uh, workflow activities and things like that, you can actually just build it out here. So let's look at that. Um, this would be considered a flow activity or a, let's see here, let me show you. So flow logic, that's where you grab that stuff. You can build these if for each, do the following until, do the following in parallel. So if you want, if you want to do two things at the same time, you can use this and, and use two, you know, you can build two actions. Decision, you can do all this stuff that you can do in the workflow editor. So let's look at here, we, we ask for approval. If request is approved, uh, we update the training request record with state equals open. 
uh, and else if update training request is not approved, it sets the state to close complete. So basically, basically we just say if it's approved, set it to open, else close it automatically. And I'll show you how this works as well. So let's look at the training request. Okay. So uh, let's request it for someone I know that has a manager. We can use uh, internal training, for instance, start date. We can say next week on the 4th, ends on the 8th, test training. Okay, and let's just save this. So this will run uh, when a training request is submitted. And you, this should flip up. Okay, you see that. You see the state? We've, we set the state to awaiting approval. That was the first thing we did in the update record action. The assignment group was set to customer support and the approval was generated. So if we refresh this, we'll see now, now we'll see an approval down here. We'll see an approval. So Fred Luddy is the approver. It's the manager of Adela. So if we approve this, Watch what happens. Boom, it gets approved and the state is set to open so someone can pick it up and start working on it, okay? Now let's try another one for the other condition. Adela, internal, let's do the same thing. Starting on the fourth, ending on the eighth. Uh, let's do test training number two. Let's save it. The workflow will fire in a second. Okay, the state was set to awaiting approval. Customer support is the assignment group. Requested is the approval. Okay, now let's refresh. All right, we see the approval down here and let's actually say, okay, well, I need her that week. She's gonna do a lot of work. We can't, we can't have her in training. We, we, I gotta put her on a client, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna reject this for now. Okay, so we rejected it. Let's wait to see what happens. So it was rejected, the approval was rejected, the state was set to close to complete, okay? So if you look at this, it basically says, if request approved, update the record, state open. Else, state is closed complete. So this is another, uh, approvals are a very powerful thing you can do in the flow designer, as opposed to using the workflow editor. Uh, for someone that, I know that, so for those that are used to the workflow editor, this is kind of hard to wrap your head around. Uh, not, not too bad, but it, it's kind of a top-down approach. But once you use it a few times, it gets easier. Uh, it, I think it's, you know, for someone that doesn't do a lot of coding or scripting, it is nice because you, you have these data pills that you can choose from. Um, you can do a lot of stuff. Uh, you can build decisions. You can use decision tables um, if you've got complex, op, you know, complex if-then statements. So instead of building if-then statements, you can use the decision table and uh, build out options in there and utilize that instead of building a bunch of complex if-then statements. So there's a lot of things you can do. And these were just a couple of examples to show you. And so flipping back to this, uh, you have several resources that you can, you can utilize. Uh, this is documentation and, and references which I use to build this deck out, and there's tons of training as mentioned before. It will show you a lot um, as you as you learn more about Flow Designer, and um, hopefully uh, it'll it'll become more comfortable comfortable for you than than the workflow editor. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this little session, and thank you very much for joining. Mm -hmm.